found in the 18th chapter of the Gospel, Luke's Gospel, verses 1 to 8. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she will not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjudged, unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. It is good to be with you all today. Um, and especially on a time when we gather together to worship God, but also to celebrate the United Methodist Women and its history of 150 years of vision and work on behalf of women and children around the world. It began as women learned of the health and education needs of the women of India. In Boston, 150 years ago, as eight women gathered with the wives of missionaries to India, home on furlough, they were there to listen to the women tell their stories of what was going on in India. And there they heard how cultural attitudes prevented the Indian women from getting health care and education. For you see, they could not be treated or taught by men. Upon hearing this, God stirred the hearts of these eight women until they began to, to push. These women prayed until they felt God had given them an action plan. The forerunner of our United West Methodist Women to organize organized to raise funds, educate others and themselves further. Then they supported someone who went to provide for those needs of the women in India. We can all think back and recall oh, situations oh, where we have witnessed someone being stirred by God to push or to pray and plead until something happens. Something that may be a, a plight of an individual or a group that has stirred our hearts. There are likely groups and individuals for whom we pray today. Sometimes that praying requires that we also put our feet into action. Some hurts that come to my heart are children who struggle with violence or disabilities or mental and emotional issues that impact the way in which they see each others and their world. Or families that struggle to survive and thrive when jobs or health issues limit their options. All of those God stirred in my heart so that I might act instead of just ask someone else to do it. Interestingly enough, today's reading from Splectionary links very closely to the United Methodist Women's vision and purpose through the years. Today's passage, we are introduced to two characters. The first one is the judge. The judge is well known, but a, for a negative reason. He had a very negative reputation as the town bully of sorts, who doesn't fear God or have any respect for people. It seems like this judge doesn't mind being known as a tough judge who has no regard for emotional pleas. We first meet him with this negative description in the second verse, but it's repeated again by the judge very proudly in describing himself in verse 4. 
doesn't sound like anyone you and I would ask or seek out to present our cause, does it? Well, Luke's gospel is one that's known for speaking up for the widows and the least of these. So it's not a surprise that this second character that we need today is a widow. She is a widow who is seeking justice from a ca this callous judge. We can't begin to comprehend <coughs> excuse me, what this widow's life was like. Perhaps if you've read any of the books on the United Methodist Women's Reading List, you will remember some who've lived in similar situations. I think about one, I am Malayla, which gives you a clue to the expectations of this widow. Women's behavior was extreme, extremely limited in ancient times, much like the women of Afghanistan under the Taliban oppression. Imagine some of the following restrictions in the women living in Jesus' time. Unmarried women were not allowed to leave the home of their fathers unaccompanied. Married women were not allowed to leave the home of their husbands unaccompanied. Their lives were restricted to roles of little or no authority. They could not testify in court. They could not appear in public places. They were not allowed to talk to strangers, and they had to be doubly veiled when leaving home. So with no father, no husband or son to speak on her behalf, this widow would have been walled in and silenced. It's likely that this story drew the interest and probably the amusement of the hearers of Jesus' day. Because it was more like a fantasy story. Never heard of a woman or a widow seeking or a hearing for the judge. So how does this widow get the attention of the judge? Remember, she is desperate for whatever reason for the justice that she seeks in her life. She boldly seeks out that judge. Perhaps it is when he is on his way to the city gate to judge the disputes and charges of the men of the day. <coughs> perhaps she stalks him each day as he walks by. Or perhaps she knocks on his door each day, trying to catch up his uh, time with him. Either way, she pushed or prayed and pleaded with the judge until something happened. This cold, her, his cold hard heart gives in to her request. But the scripture implies that he only did it because he was afraid of the reputation he gave if he didn't hear her. Whether it was a reputation of being someone who didn't care for widows or a reputation who was dealing with this woman who was seeking him out. Anyway, it may have not have happened for the right motives, but it did happen. Jesus hears, tells his hearers that her request was granted but that it isn't the end of his parable. Jesus continues to indicate that God is not like that unjust judge with an uncaring heart, but will grant justice to his chosen ones when they continue to cry out to God. Jesus continues by asking the disciples and hearers, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Why does Jesus wrap up this parable with this question? Perhaps Jesus knows how difficult it is to keep praying in trust to a loving God, even when circumstances of life seem unbearable and unending. How do we keep trusting and praying for justice, liberation, wholeness, or curing when there's no obvious way out? The widow of today's story can be our teacher. Her situation is bleak. She has no rights, no access, but it didn't bring her bitterness or dampen her trust in God or the judge. She used push, prayer, or pleading until something happened. She kept calling on the judge, or in our mind, it could be God, trusting despite the evidence that the, to the contrary, that there would be a breakthrough in her hopelessness. That push is hard work, requiring boldness and persistence. So often we expect our lives of faith to be fulfilling 
successful, and everything pretty positive. But we all know this isn't so. Despite our best hope and effort, life happens. In our lives of goodness and joy, there are also stresses, suffering, and longings. So we still cry out to our Abba Father, who longs with us that all could be different. Somehow that calling out to God in itself is a help. It helps even if it seems that nothing changes. I have discovered that it's far more consoling to have a God who feels the pain, anger, and frustration with me, and who longs for a better world, than to have the God who is more like the image I recall from a song of my youth. From the musical Christian musical, Tell It Like It Is, that song is rosy tinted glasses, and some of the words that I recall are, well, I see God with a long white beard who brings me gifts at the end of the year, or I see God as a vending machine. You drop in the coin or the request, and God makes a scene. It continues with very vivid, vivid images of God through our rosy tinted glasses. But we don't want a God who is more like a genie in a bottle or a Mr. Fix-It who fixes everything in our beck and call. It would seem that for Jesus, faith doesn't fix things as much as it gives us the ability and courage to push and pray until something happens. It is in that push that we are aware of God with us in our broken places or in possible stressful situations and relationships. I think about that push with Jacob as he struggled with God, or Moses struggling to be faithful to God while leading a wayward people, or the prophets having to deliver warnings to the people, or to the early church as they were trying to understand how to be faithful with witnesses without the presence of Jesus embodied. Sometimes we also discover that we push for a particular outcome, only to realize that prayer was not answered as we expected. But we find a change in our attitude, and that's the answered prayer. I think of the congregants of the Mother Emanuel Church in Charlotte who lost their friends and family members. I read recently a story of, of an account by one of the men who lost his wife, and he had every intention to go to that arraignment for Dylan Ruth and, and him push for the death penalty. But when he got there and had the opportunity to speak, words of forgiveness came out of his mouth. And at that point, he realized that that was God's will into which he now had to live. Another similar example would be the Amish who lost their daughters in the school shooting years ago. They went as far as to reach out and assist the family of the murderer. I recently attended a conference of deacons from across the country. The event was planned to give us an opportunity to explore our options and directions for ministry in the presence of an ever-changing and uncertain church, future for the church. But to help, how can we build God's kingdom? Many started their call by serving in the church, but more and more they are finding their places to serve beyond the local church. While being connected to the church is a place for grounding and as partners in serving in the troubled world in which we live. We found encouragement and hope in our sharing and in our praying for each other. It became a time of push. We prayed and will continue to pray knowing that God is shaping us, God's church, and our world to be better witnesses. God is doing new things in and through God's church and wants to through each of us. In the face of delayed promises and frustrations and disappointment, we need to pray like that bold widow willing to give a black eye through our persistence. We need to pray boldly without ceasing. But above all else, pray and trust and hope in God who is worthy of that trust. Don't pray in despair. Don't lose heart. God is with us. 
So will the Son of Man find faith on earth? As long as the people who are immersed in dark nights of suffering dream and pray until something happens in our outlook and relationships rather than despair, I believe that the Son of Man will find faith on earth. So as the United Methodist Women, the United Methodist Church, and individuals of faith move into the future, may God help us push or pray until something happens, as did the widow before the unjust judge. May we pray for God's vision of justice and the reality of God's kingdom for all people. Amen. Amen.